Fast, focused, and fearless. Here's everything you need to know as you jumpstart your day. I'm Diego Castro. The United States underscored its commitment to the defense of the Philippines in President Bongbong Marcos's meeting with U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris. This comes as the Philippines faces pressure from China in a disputed South China Sea. Reporting live from Washington, we have mobile journalist Julie Baisa with the rest of the details. Diego, President Bongbong Marcos meets with U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris and Second Gentleman Douglas Emhoff at the U.S. Naval Observatory here in Washington, D.C. this morning. Before his meeting, Marcos admitted that he is concerned over Beijing's continued provocation in the South China Sea. Marcos was reacting to the Philippine Coast Guard reporting a near collision between Chinese and Philippine vessels in the waters of Ayung Shoal. The president also said that this is one of the issues he has to face back home. In connection with this, Marcos Jr. noted that cooperation with the United States is something that has been going on for decades and has to continue. For her part, VP Harris lauded Marcos for his leadership and efforts in prioritizing mutual prosperity and security. She stressed that under the Marcos leadership, the relationship between the United States and Philippines has become stronger. Meanwhile, Marcos and Harris vowed to boost mutually beneficial partnerships between Manila and Washington on a wide range of areas such as digital inclusion and clean energy economy. Aside from the meeting with VP Harris, Marcos also met with various groups in a series of private meetings. Jago, tomorrow, PBBM would meet midweek with the senior military officials over at Pentagon. Jago? Thank you so much for those updates. That was mobile journalist Julie Baiza reporting live from Washington. At least 34 Filipinos from Sudan have returned to the Philippines Tuesday night. The 34 evacuees bring the total number of Filipinos to be repatriated from Sudan to 66. 31 of those repatriated were students in Sudan, while the other three belong to a family who used to stay in the war-torn country. One of those repatriated was a student taking up Islamic studies at Khartoum universities. He says he and other Filipino students were initially stranded at the border between Sudan and Cairo. He admits that them being students made it more difficult for them to cross the border. Nagtuntak po kami sa imbahada ng Pilipinas upang bigyan po kami ng travel documents po. Kasi as students po, hindi po kami makakalabas ng Khartoum or university without uh, travel documents. The government will provide assistance for the repatriated Filipinos. The cost of their tickets back to the Philippines were also shouldered by the government. The DFA says and assures that the public, the public that officials from the embassy in Cairo are working around the clock to rescue more Filipinos from Sudan. Alam po ninyo na, na sumuong din sa panganib ang ating mga kasamahan sa ating imbahada ng Pilipinas sa Cairo, nagkaroon po ng counting aksidente sa pagmamadali nila pero sa awa naman ng Diyos ay uh, uh, wala naman pong lubhang nasugatan. The El Nino phenomenon is now 80% more likely to hit the Philippines by next month at the earliest or by August. The State Weather Bureau initially projected that the El Nino will develop by the third quarter. But now their projections show that the El Nino phenomenon will likely happen sooner than later, possibly as early as June. And this dry spell is expected to persist until the first quarter of next year. As early as now, the Interior Department is implementing measures to cushion the possible impact of El Nino. Under a memorandum circular, DILG Chief Benhar Avalos directed local governments to pass their own ordinances to conserve water resources and to allow their concessionaires to conduct emergency leak repairs. So yung template ay yung nakaraan na rin. No? Pinapa-compile lang natin ito. Of course, there is this task force before that headed by NEDA. Tayo tumutulong dito. No? Ito yung tayo pinulong ng, ng ating mahal na presidente. Meanwhile, because of the extreme heat, public schools in Muntinlupa have shifted back to blended learning to avoid heat-related illnesses among students like heat stroke. This makes Muntinlupa the first local government in Metro Manila to adjust the conduct of classes due to high heat. The measure combines face-to-face -face and asynchronous modalities for teaching, and it covers students from kindergarten to senior high school. Blended learning will be in place in Muntinlupa for a month or until June 2. 
Free experience ang ating mga kababayan ngayon ng extreme uh, temperature, no? high temperature sa ating climate. And uh, hindi naman kasi lahat ng public schools natin ay equipped with uh, air conditioning units. So it makes it uncomfortable for students. We'll be back with more stories after the break. Keep it here on The One News. You're still watching One News Now. I'm Diego Castro. A Senate panel wants stiffer penalties against smugglers of agricultural products. Data from the Department of Justice showed that out of the 150 agriculture smuggling cases they've received since 2016, around half have been dismissed, while only nine managed to make it to court and are still pending. And according to the group CNAG, the process of convicting smugglers remains slow since only the Bureau of Customs can file complaints. Senate Agriculture Panel Chairman Cynthia Villar also noted that large-scale smuggling constitutes economic sabotage. She now wants accused agri-smugglers to be barred from being allowed to pay fines and for them to be detained while the case against them is being heard. Villar also wants hoarding, price manipulation, and other cartel offenses to be non-bailable. Yung mga ma 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 madidemanda dito, mayayaman. Yeah, yeah. The only uh, magagawa mo sa kanila para mapatigil sila is makulong sila. Yeah, That's the only deterrent to smugglers that they be filed criminal cases and then makulong sila kahit hindi namin sila ma-assistensyahan. Ma Airport authorities announced that the entire Philippine airspace will be shut down for six hours on May 17. The Manila International Airport Authority said the closure will begin at midnight until 6 in the morning. The airspace shutdown will give way for maintenance of the uninterrupted power supply of the country's air traffic management system. The MIAA also directed airlines to advise their passengers whose flights may be affected by the closure. The airlines can advise the passengers the better because of this planned uh, changes on their itinerary. What will happen there is for six hours, uh, wala talaga activity sa ating airspace. But of course, CAAP is saying it could happen uh, mas maikli, di ba? Pwede shorter. Pero as far as their pla planning is concerned, we're planning for six hours. The Office of the Ombudsman has meanwhile ordered the preventive suspension of Manila and International Airport Authority General Manager Cesar Chong. The preventive suspension, which he received Tuesday and dated April 28, was made because he reassigned some 285 of the airport's employees. But according to Chong, he made the move to improve airport operations. Chong explains the order was, quote, based on an anonymous complaint alleging grave abu abuse of authority. Chong is confident that he will soon be cleared from these accusations. And that's it for this hour. Join us again at 7.45 a.m. as we continue to monitor the day's biggest stories. I'm Jego Castro. We are One News. All sides, all the time. <laughs>